Okay, this is a quick video going over the getting started with Vivado uh, example. This is basically the Blinky example for uh, Vivado. I'm using here uh, for the road test this uh, Zybo Z7. This is a Z710. As you can see, it's missing a PMOD connection there. Um, so, basically, the getting started guide walked you through a, a basic example of how to set up Vivado and create a project and then uh, actually push a, a bitstream onto the board to blink a light. Um, so I have um, this up and running. Um, you get the quick start guide over on the, the left hand side there and then the board and the image and then the, the web page for the digilent page for this example. Um, so this example, uh, let me go ahead and get rid of this for a bit. And then I'll extend this. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit more. Yeah, so this goes through uh, to starting Pavado and then uh, it shows both Windows and Linux. And then the started page, and then how to create a project, open a project. Uh, so you're going to create the project, and then uh, you're going to give it a description and stuff like that. And then uh, you're going to create an RTL project with this. You don't have to specify any source because you're going to create it. Uh, and then uh, the other thing you have to do, you have to download a board file, which they should show. Go through all that. Y yeah, here. So there's a zip archive. You have to download that for the Zybo board. It doesn't seem to come default with Vivado. I'm running 19.1.1. I'm using the update to .1. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so that's where, let me go back up here again. Uh, so you're creating the project. Uh, yeah, and it tells you if the board does not appear, you have to download the file, but the download's later. Uh, and then you have to go through here and it talks about the project manager from the, the flow navigator and then the IP integrator is the different options that you have and then from the project manager you're going to click on sources you're going to create a source file inside here um, and you go through this and then adding the constraints file the constraints file is what comes from the zip archive um, so that's for that particular board and that kind of lays out the different pieces of the board LEDs, buttons, I guess PMOD and so you go through and uh, I guess that's where you add files and you add your board file inside there and then uh, yep so you're gonna edit that gonna edit the clock and you're gonna edit the LED and then you're going to create the source file. You're going to use, uh, in, in the example, it uses Verilog versus uh, VHDL. You create the blinky.v. And uh, it's very simple. And uh, the clock and the LED that you set up in the constraints file, you set those for input and output. And then uh, you go through this. And then you create the source file. And the basic source is going to be really simple. And then you just add a reg, a register, and you assign the LED to account value, and then you set the clock count. And basically, it increments as the the, the counter gets to a certain value. And then you have to go through this whole process. So that's what I'm going to show here. So all the other setup and everything has been done uh, through the starting guide and go through Bravado. I have it up. I have the example here. I'm going to open this. I'm going to see if this works. Hopefully it works. Um, sometimes it hangs. It seems to take a lot longer than what it should. This is definitely not quick. Okay, so it's up and running. And uh, so here's your flow navigator with project manager, IP integrator, and all the good stuff here. Um, up here under project manager, manager, and get sources. Expand this. Oh. I have to move this. There's our blinky. 
and here's our constraints file that we brought in then we made the edits I edit these two files or these two entries uncomment them you have to add the name uh, set for clock so this sets up the clock that we need and this is coming in on pin K17 and then down further you'll set the property uh, for the LED and uh, and in here it was LED 0 um, and so they just set it to LED to make it simple I guess since we're only doing one LED and this is coming off on M14 so package pin M14 and that's pretty much it's all that's inside there let me go back up and then the source code the Verilog code uh, hardware description that we had so the modules blinky as an input clock output LED as a register uh, 24 to 0 um, always on the positive edge clock you count get set to count plus one LED equals count and then you end model, module equals count and uh, so once you have all that in place um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the size at and we'll see how that goes uh, unlike other dev boards um, like an STM board or Arduino or TI board uh, where you, you're creating the source code and you build it and then you run it this has got a lot of different steps in order to get to that final bit file that you load on the board just to blink the LED. Now these pieces were simple and you see how simple the code was. Um, and it shouldn't take long. Right, but we'll see. So to run this we'll run synthesis. Uh, since this has already been run I'm going to rerun it. And it's basically going to wipe out what's already been done. Uh, I'm going to take all the defaults and let it go. Let's see how long this takes. It's not ready, even though it says up here we're waiting. It's thinking, it's doing its thing. And there it goes. And so it's going to run for a while. And then hopefully it doesn't take too long. You can see down here the synth is running through uh, synth design. Uh, down here you have log files and messages. I uh, got tickle console. Uh, so this will kind of tell you what's going on. Uh, so you see it's running and running and uh, this could take a while. Um, but yeah so the other thing about this I was running this from an SD card earlier for Petit Linux example and uh, in order to run it this way there's a couple of jumpers you have to set. So you have to set this jumper back over to JTAG. You set it to the left. Oh, let me get the, the board back up here. I think I clicked that off. Okay, now we get the board back up. So there's a jumper over here. You gotta set that to JTAG. Um, you set it to SD to the left and that'll boot it from the SD card. And the other thing was because of the Petalonix example I was using, it was using Ethernet and some other things. Um, so I had to set this, this jumper here to the wall wart uh, power instead of USB. You, even though I'm using a powered USB um, hub that has an extra power piece to it, connection, that still wasn't enough. Um, and it just kept rebooting. So, um, looks like bit synthesis is complete. Uh, this is another interesting thing. So for, for the Vivado, I don't know if it was, it, it, it'll kind of walk you through the process as needed. So the, the synthesis was successfully completed. Now we got to run implementation. Again, I'm going to just take defaults. And this will go for a little bit. Think about it. Now it's running. This will actually go through a few uh, options. We'll see. I was having some problems with it earlier. wasn't quite sure what it was. But uh, we'll see. 
So back on the example, now we kind of run, let me see where we were, up here. So we run the run synthesis, now we run the implementation. The last piece will uh, generate bitstream and then we can load it on the board. Uh, see, So this is running op design. So this will change to different options. Um, yeah, so the jumpers have to set it back to here to power from USB. That's what I'm running right now. That way I don't have to use a wall board because I'm just using the board. Um, and then uh, this back over here for JTAG to get the JTAG connection. Well, that's another thing I need to make sure. Oh, no, I'm not running BM this time. Okay. It should pick it up. Yeah, it should be plugged in. Uh, if you're when I was running a VM, I'm running VM to, so I can run 17.4. Um, I have to make sure I pull in the Digilent JTAG. Um, otherwise, it doesn't find the board. So now it's running uh, route design. So it's the next step. I think we're getting close. Yep, route design signal through. Hopefully that's the last piece. It should go and go and go. And, uh, oh, there we go. This was successful. Uh, now we want to generate bitstream. All right. Yes. Run. Now it should generate the bitstream, the bit file that we load on the board. There it goes. Running right bitstream. We'll see how it goes. Earlier, this was taking a very long time. I ended up rebooting, I relaunched everything. So, hopefully, that cleared out the issue. Uh, actually, I'm going to turn the board on because I think we're getting close to where it should load. Ask for us to, to load it on the board. And right now, it's not doing anything. That's the thing about FPGAs uh, when you're running. When you loading straight to the FPGA and not doing anything out through uh, QS Spy or QSpy or through the ARM processor side of it, um, when you just load in the FPGA, when you turn power off, it goes away, so it goes back to a blank state. So you have to reload the image. Um, that's the the joy of having the ARM processor and the Zinc. You can actually have that done from the ARM side. So when the ARM processor boots up, let's say a Linux kernel, you can have it load bitstream and then load your hardware design. So this thing is going to crank away. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, I just want to give you an indication of the steps and the processes. Um, I mean, there's a lot of write-up as far as this piece, which is pretty simple. And then, uh, but this is the steps. This is how long it takes this to do a very simple, uh, as you saw, the code that was written. Very simple. Okay. Oh, we don't want to implement. We want to run open up hardware. So now it's finally finished. The bit stream uh, is complete. We run. We want to run open hardware manager. And that's down here. So we want to go yes. So this will do the part of it to uh, to launch to the board. No, no, there's no content. Right, right. And then uh, open new hardware target. So this is hardware manager. We want to open the target right here. And we want to auto connect. So it should find it. Like found something connected. Boom. I think it connected, didn't it? Hello. Okay, so now it's connected. We got a digitalint device here. So we're all set up. Uh, right, serial links. Everybody's happy. And then the next piece is to program it. From this point, click program. It's going to ask us this, bitstream, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, boom. It's programming the device, and there goes the blinky. I think you can see it. 
and I just decided to switch. So there it is. There's our blinky. So we've got the LED blinking. Uh, so that's the process that it takes with this with Vovato. And again, this is with uh, 2019.1.1 with the update one. So it's dot one dot one. And uh, so that's basically after you did the simple the blinky example of configuring the bear log and configuring your constraints file this is the end result and that's how long it took uh, to get to there so that's pretty much it and uh, so that's our two blinky example okie dokie